Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary. Amber here. Today, uh, I have the privilege of talking to you about the book of Ruth. So we'll spend the next three days <clears throat> going through the book of Ruth. And I will not be reading the entire book to you, but I want to encourage all of you to read the book of Ruth for yourself. It's only four chapters, so it's very short. Uh, if you sit down and read it all the way through, it'll take you probably 20 to 30 minutes, so not very long. But I really encourage you guys to read it so you can know the details of the story for yourself. And the reason for that is that God's word is completely true. There are no mistakes in it, and we can 100% trust what it is. It is God's living word written to us. I am human. Every teacher and preacher is human, and sometimes we make mistakes. So it's so important anytime you hear a sermon or a lesson or someone teaching about the Bible to check what they're saying against what God's Word actually says. So I hope that you guys choose to read the book of Ruth for yourself uh, and let God speak to you through His Word. Um, so I'm going to just give you some summaries and applications for the book of Ruth. But before we jump into that, I want to explain to you the importance of the book of Ruth because it's this short little book wedged in between Judges and 1 Samuel. And some people might be like, what is the point of the book of Ruth? So the point of the, why it was written was to show the legitimacy of King David and ultimately pointing to the line of David that points to Jesus, the Messiah. And so it was written in a time during Judges um, where everyone was doing what they thought was right in their own eyes, rebelling against God. And then you have this book of Ruth showing, here's how the line of David came about, how God brought it about, worked redemption, brought hope and healing and restoration, and shows the genealogy of David. And David is important to show the line of the Messiah, Jesus, who is our savior and king. And so that is the importance of this book um, to show why the people needed a king uh, and how that came about. So this book also shows God's provision and redemption through difficult situations in life. So Ruth 1 talks about how this guy, Elimelech, with his wife, Naomi, and their two sons leave Israel. They're from Bethlehem, and there's a famine going on. And they leave, and they go to an enemy country of Moab. And while they're there, their two sons get married. Um, but while, during that time, uh, Elimelech dies, and Naomi's two sons also die. And this is important because if all the men in your family die, there's no one there to support you. So Naomi and her two daughter-in-laws are left with no men and no one to take care of them. Naomi hears that the famine is over in Israel and there's an abundance of food, so she decides to go back to Bethlehem. And her two daughter-in-laws are going to go with her, but she wants the best for them. And so she says, go back to your families so that you can remarry have children, and have a blessed life. Her daughter-in-law, Orpah, decides to leave her and go back home. But her daughter-in-law, Ruth, clings to her, and this is what she says in verse 16. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or return from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. See, this is really significant what she says, especially in verse um, 17, where she says, May the Lord do so to me. Um, she is saying Yahweh. She, and in her saying this, she is renouncing her old gods. She's a Moabite. She has different gods. And saying, God, the true God, is going to meet my God, and I am going to follow him. So she changes her life. She goes with Naomi back to Bethlehem. And when the women arrive, it causes a stir in the city because they've been gone for 10 years. 
and they come back, none of the men are with them, and it causes this stir in the city, and Naomi's response to the people is this. She says, do not call me Na Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? See, she changes her name from Naomi, which means pleasant, to Mara, which means bitter. And she blames God for her situation, thinking that he's done this uh, as a punishment for some sin in her life. And so she is bitter and upset. And we can read the book and we know the story of how God works provision and redemption and restoration in her life and, and Ruth's life, not only for them personally, but it's part of God's plan of redemption for the entire world. Um, but she can't see that in the moment. But we know that there's hope at the end of the story. But sometimes we're just like Naomi. When we're in difficulties in life, when we feel the chaos around us, when we're in that bitterness, and we just think God's punishing us. See, she didn't understand God's character, and she didn't know what he was going to work in her life. And so when we're in that place of just despair and bitterness, remember God's goodness. Remember his grace and his mercy and knowing that he is always with you and he is working in your life. Read the book of Ruth when you're in times like that and remember that God promises redemption in your life. He is working for your good and he loves you so much. So don't be like Orpah and when things get bad, return to your old way of life. Be faithful in following God and trust in him, knowing that he is with you and loves you and will work redemption in your life. So have a great day.